I'm gonna be so honest, I am going to go to Barnes & Noble with my friends. Um, and they are in the apartment right now, and we are all gonna go in the same car, but I'm filming this in my car alone because I cannot physically get myself to film a talking clip whilst there are other people around. <laughs> um, hi! I think this is a beautiful beginning to this to this little vlog that we have going on here. Um, hello, hi, uh, my name is Kakayo, nice to meet you, welcome, or welcome back to the channel. I am a 20-something year old aspiring author who is documenting her journey to authorhood, I don't know, <laughs> authorhood and just documenting life in her 20s. I'm trying to work on that little intro beginning intro part. I don't know if it works so far, but I hope that I got the message across. Um, and before I begin with anything, I just wanted to say, oh my gosh, thank you to all the new people here. It's so exciting to me that people are being so kind and leaving so many super nice comments about YouTube and, and AuthorTube and just, I just already feel so welcome. And some AuthorTubers who I love are, um, have been so kind and it's like oh my gosh i watched you inspired me to start this and here you are um and it's just so fun so i'm super thankful to everyone who's here right now and to everyone who will be joining and all of that stuff i'm just thanks all right cringe done let's get to the let's get to, let's get to business <laughs> definitely i'm not the first person to make like a come books book shopping video with me i've seen a couple of them on YouTube already and I love them. They're so like, it's like going with a friend, you know? And I love that. I will leave some of my favorites linked down below, but I just thought it would be fun to go book shopping um, to get some books that I love. I, I'll explain this later on when I get to the actual book haul portion of it, but I'm going to buy books that I've already read because that's how I, you'll see no spoilers okay well you'll get you'll get that stuff at the end of the video i'm hoping i can also write a little bit while there um i'm gonna bring my laptop with me and whatever else i might need to see if i can get in a couple words that depends though because atmosphere is a very big deal for me and if it's too busy i will not write <laughs> um and yeah so i just thought it would be a fun little video i don't want to keep make this this portion of it too long so we're just gonna i guess get into it my car with some books 
<laughs> yes, hi. We are back from Barnes & Noble where I did not, in fact, write. I tried to, but it, there was just too much going on. Too much going on, honey. I could not do it, but it's fine. I, I think maybe I might, uh, maybe I'll put this in a vlog. I have some writing updates and just some, uh, some fun little writing related content to talk about but i think because this is becoming a very just book centered video i might just talk about that in my next vlog so what we're all really here for is the haul yes exciting <laughs> um i got a total of four books here oh should i do a little thumbnail who is she oh, she's a youtuber oh my god <laughs> anyways um yes and Three of these four books I have already read, which is what I was gonna explain. I said I was gonna explain this earlier, but the way that I read and the way that I purchase books, I am a very big proponent of libraries and the Libby app, which if you don't know, it's just like a, it's just an online library app where you can borrow books, um, eBooks and, and audiobooks from your local library. Um, and I have, <laughs> don't, this is a secret between us. I have two library cards for two different counties because I finesse the system, okay? We're not gonna talk about it, but I have access, you know? <laughs> um, so I use that to read my books. Like, that's pretty much all I use. And it helps me a lot to cut down on waste and on buying books that I read and otherwise don't love. Um, so what I like to do is read books on Libby and then if I love the book then I'll buy it because I want to own it on my shelves and I want to be able to reread and annotate and do all that fun stuff so that's what I usually do um like 99% of the time and there's of course the outlier where I pre-order a book from an author that's an auto buy author like Emily Henry I will auto buy you know and just some other books like I haven't read this but I know that I will probably love it so I'm fine buying this um having not read it yet and if I do read a book that I own physically and I don't love it, if it's a pretty book, I'll keep it. <laughs> because it's happened before where books are pretty and on first read, I did not enjoy it. And then a year later, I reread it and I'm like, best book I've ever read. So who knows, maybe things could change. That's just my process. Um, so this is essentially just gonna be me gushing about romances that I love, that I've already read. But I guess we can start with the one book that I haven't read that you've already seen, which is She is a Haunting. I feel like as someone who very often has her name mispronounced, I am very sensitive to mispronouncing other people's names. So I'm going to put the author's name on the screen. Everyone knows, most people know about this book. It's just a gothic YA horror? horror? Gothic YA horror that I've been hearing so much about and as someone who loves gothic novels I have a gothic adult novel idea that it's been just in the back of my mind for so long and I'm trying to build up my skill set in my writing to get to a point where I feel like I can do the story justice so I think starting I'm gonna start getting ready for that by reading a lot of gothic stories um, so I'm super excited for this I will leave the, a little blurb here on the screen I really love to go into books blind um, or as blind as possible so all I know about this is that it has to do with a house I believe that's haunted um, and that's as much as I know <laughs> so yeah and it also I think draws a lot from Vietnamese culture um, yeah yeah so I'm excited to read this. I'm really, really pumped. I'm hoping that it gets me just super prepped and in the gothic vibes um, to brainstorm a little bit more of that adult novel, even though I don't think I'm gonna be writing it anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> so these two are in the same family, but it's a series, but you don't have to read them in order. Um, and that is Delilah Green doesn't care and Astrid Parker doesn't fail. I forgot the names of them, even though I love them. I read this book a couple months ago, I think the beginning-ish of this year. Um, I read both Delilah Green and Astrid Parker, like, back to back. And I fell in love with Delilah Green. Like, the book, but also the character specifically. This is Delilah. She is like, I would do unspeakable things for this woman. <laughs> I really would. And... That's just all I'm gonna say. But I love Delilah Green. I think these books are so good. And there's um, there's a third book coming out. Delilah Green is about 
this um, photographer who comes back to photograph her sister's, her stepsister's wedding, who she's not really close to. They have a very complicated sister relationship, which I love. I love um, nuanced and complicated sibling relationships in novels, but especially sisters. Um, so this was so good. And she just comes back and she doesn't fit in the small town or she doesn't feel like she fits and she has to deal with catching feelings for one of her sister's friends who she thought used to bully her it's not really it's not bully it's more like i don't know i will have it on the screen it's just very good it's it deals with a lot more i feel than just romance it deals with again sister relationships it deals with um feeling like you don't belong it feels with it deals with um a, a lot of youthful misunderstanding um between families and just an, I just love it. I just thought it was a fun time. I thought it was really, really funny and really nuanced. And I love when a romance deals with more than just romance, which I think this is why Beatrice is one of my favorite books um, of all time, because it's a romance, but it also deals heavily with like grief, um, which this isn't about Beatrice, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know. But yeah, I love it. I super recommend. And then there is Astrid Parker, which is Delilah's stepsister. And this is, uh, I'm also going to leave it on the screen. She's an interior designer, but she doesn't really love what she's doing. Um, and But she gets tasked with designing this, this uh, really, really historic hotel for the town that she's in. And it's going to be recorded like on HGTV and stuff like that. Um, but she ends up falling for the carpenter who is employed to fix up the hotel who also happens to be the granddaughter of the hotel owner if that makes any sense this is also so fantastic this one um delilah and delilah green both protagonists are very aware of their queerness but in astrid parker um astrid comes to terms with her queerness and i really enjoyed reading it it was so good it was so fantastic i think i love delilah a little bit more just because again delilah is woman she is woman period and now the last book which is another one of my all-time favorite romances the unhoneymooners which i feel like a lot of people know i didn't even say the author um, delilah green and astrid parker are by ashley herring blake um the unhoneymooners is by christina lauren which is an author duo i feel most people know christina lauren uh but i freaking love this book i read this right after i read beach read and maybe I thought maybe it might have been Beach Read like high, but I recently reread this, um, the audiobook and the and the ebook at the same time on Libby, and I was like, no, no, definitely this this remains this this love is warranted. Um, so what is it about? It's about Olive Torres, who is a twin sister, and she's like the unlucky twin, and her sister just recently got married, um, and, but then in the wedding, everyone gets sick, so her sister can no longer take her honeymoon, okay? And so she's like, hey, hey, my sweet, lovely sister, please take this honeymoon for me and pretend to be me. But the only problem is that she is going to have to share the honeymoon with the groom's brother um who is ethan and who is the love interest and it is so good because they hate each other and most of the time i will say for for um rom-coms i do not like enemies to lovers most of the time because i feel like it's not properly marketed um i'm full disclosure i am more of a friends to lovers girl just in general but for enemies to lovers i feel like it works a lot better in fantasy where the enemies can be for a specific reason my camera just overheated on me i think enemies to lovers is more geared towards fantasy where it can be tr they can be true enemies for reasons that have to do with the plot or the world building are they from uh, warring um warring countries or are they like there there's a reason for that and they can truly despise each other um and, and it makes sense but i i feel like a lot of times while reading a rom-com if it's marketed as enemy silvers it's actually just i'm annoyed by you and then oh i'm actually attracted to you which is fine you know but it's not true enemy lovers that was just my spiel i still love it don't get me wrong i still love you like you know you're annoying to me but also I think you're hot. I think it's fun. I think it's nice. So 
that was my little haul. I hope you enjoyed this whole video and just spending the day with me. I'm probably gonna go try to write some more in my apartment and eat some lunch because I'm starving. I'm excited to get into She is a Haunting. I don't remember the last time I read a, a YA book actually because I've been reading a lot of just general adult fiction and fantasy and what even have I been reading? I've been reading a lot of rom-coms, duh. One thing you should know about me, I do love a romance. I do love a rom-com. It helps so much with my anxiety. Um, so I'm really excited to, to jump into YA again. It's been a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get out before my camera overheats for the like fourth time. Thank you so much for watching this video. And again, thank you for being here. Let's bring it in. <laughs> thank you for being here i appreciate it so deeply um i guess upcoming videos <laughs> just to, to let you know what's coming up i really want to do a video where i read some of my old the first chapters of some of my um shelved novels and i also i might do that for like my wattpad stuff as well that might be a separate video because i need to mentally prepare myself to go back into wattpad kakayo you know what i'm talking about like that was a dark time. And you know what's so embarrassing? Is that you'd think all of these, all the Wattpad stories were written in like 2010s before that, when I was a baby baby, honey. They are written a little bit too close to present day to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a little bit too, too soon. That was, that was not long enough, but it's fine. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna go inside now. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me along with this video and I hope to see you with the next one. Bye!